Hi everybody, Chris Coleman here, Certified Hand Therapist for HelpForTheHand.com and today we are announcing and launching um, with the success of HelpForTheHand.com, we are now moving into HelpForTheElbow.com. So today we're going to be talking about elbow pain. Um, typically elbow pain falls into four specific categories. Uh, the first is a fracture. Um, those are relatively straightforward and pretty simple to diagnose. There's usually a fall on an outstretched hand or a bent arm um, and the force gets transmitted and disrupts either the uh, radial head, which is up there, maybe the olecranon, maybe the uh, capitella, maybe the coronary process. It may also involve an elbow dislocation where it comes out of the joint um, along with the fracture. Uh, those are pretty self-explanatory. You know those going in that something has happened. You go get the x-ray, the doctor comes in and, and says, okay, um, you've got a fracture and here's how we're going to handle it. You're either casted or they end up having to go in there and do some surgery to, to hold some things together and then you end up having some rehabilitation. So that's that's pretty straightforward. Uh, second area that can commonly get injured is the, are the ligaments. Um, we see that for sports fans, for baseball fans. Uh, we see that for uh, Tommy John surgery and uh, ulnar collateral ligament strains and sprains. Um, and that is where a disruption of the ligaments which hold bone to bone and stabilize the joint get injured. We see it in javelin throwers, volleyball players, um, pitchers. Anybody with overhead throwing or hitting um, tend to potentially suffer from that issue. And that obviously has been getting more and more in, um, in the past couple decades um, with uh, pitchers and with uh, young people pitching and that's really been in the vernacular. Dr. James Andrews has done some great work um, in that regard and in bringing it to the forefront and trying to give us some strategies and things to, to prevent this epidemic really and what's happening there. And again, that one's pretty much straightforward, just like um, fractures. But with that, you can kind of feel it brewing a little bit. Velocity goes down for pitchers. Maybe accuracy goes down. You get pain maybe when you're throwing, pain after you're throwing, and it's just kind of ticking a little bit. Um, but those are pretty straightforward. Second or third thing you get is um, tendon injuries or tendonitis. Those are overuse injuries. Uh, typically, you'll see um, tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis, where the muscles that extend your fingers and your wrist and live here and start here um, get sore. So when you go to use your hand or grip things, um, they get sore on that surface and that's typically called tennis elbow or again lateral epicondylitis. And it can make simple things like um, trying to drink a cup of coffee painful because you get the pain up there in your elbow. On the other side of the elbow, on the medial side, um, you get a symptom called golfer's elbow um, and that's when you go ahead and you flex different things with your hand um, it's painful. Now that's not as common as lateral epicondylitis, but it is um, one of the conditions that you see. Um, and the fourth thing we see, and usually the typical thing for most elbow issues is, is what we call nerve compressions or nerve pain. And typically it's your funny bone. It's not a bone and there's nothing funny about it. But that nerve that runs right there, um, if it gets compressed or it gets squished or kinked um, from having our arms like this, our small finger and half this half of our ring finger end up getting numbness and tingling. Um, and you can have a little bit of clumsiness, it feels like. Typically this happens at night because we all fetal up and our elbow is bent. And picture a garden hose. If I kink the garden hose like this, less water comes out of the hose. So it's the same thing with your nerve. If you kink that for long enough, the velocities and the nerves don't, don't do their thing um, and you end up getting numbness and tingling in these fingers. Uh, now I've noticed um, I get this when I'm on my phone because if you look at my elbow, it's bent for a prolonged period of time if I'm doing work on my phone. Um, also people when they're driving, because a lot of times they're sitting very close to the wheel and they're driving like this and their elbow is bent. Um, so if you're getting symptoms like that or any of those things, either pain at the elbow when you're doing things from possibly tendonitis, uh, nerve compression with the, with the pain and the numbness and tingling that's going on, or you know if you're post-fracture or um, you know have an ulnar collateral ligament potential issue, dislocation, any of those things, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you. I obviously don't want to give generic advice because I don't know who's watching this, but feel free to email me at jchriscoolman at gmail.com and I'll try and help you as best I can. Certainly with the tendonitis and the nerve compressions or some strategies you can do before you would even get to the potential where you would need um, to either see a doctor or you would need to go have surgery for it. Um, the fractures and then obviously a Tommy John surgery, you would need the involvement of a, of a, a surgeon. Uh, to help you get on the right path for that. Um, so the, the site is helpforthelbow.com. It'll direct you to the, actually the helpforthehand.com. 
uh, and I'm happy to help you. So uh, feel free to reach out. Thanks, everybody.